Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good evening. Okay, uh, first of all, I would like to welcome all audience to our webinar sessions today. So, before we begin, let me roughly introduce our speaker background. Uh, so, our expected speaker today is Associate Professor Diandarin, Dr. Diandarina Indah Darius. Okay, so uh, she is currently the Director for Student Development Center at Student Affairs and Alumni UPNM. Um, Okay, so prior to the portfolio, yeah, she was uh, the e-learning coordinator and an active member of the Malaysian IHL e-learning council. Uh, in terms of research, most of her current research is on physical economics, but she always retain her options uh, open, so perhaps into cognitive and other human factors in the future. So she is a lifetime member of Malaysia Science and Technology Society. So, uh, as a dedicated human factor and economic society of Malaysia member, uh, both as secretary and technical committee, uh, she had helped establish the guideline on ergonomic risk assessment at workplace 2017 uh, for DOSH. So, uh, she is aspired to be a professional economist some days. Uh, and I believe that for our webinar today, she is the right person to share her knowledge and experience in this topic. Okay, so our topic today is economy in engineering, yeah? So, uh, without further ado, I would like to welcome the speaker to deliver presentations, Dr. Dian, silakan. Thank you very much, uh, Madam uh, Chairman. And thank you, Masa, for inviting me for this uh, webinar on a Friday uh, evening. Okay, uh, I hope the you you won't expect too much of the content in my presentation as this is Friday. I am giving a very light uh, presentation on ergonomics in engineering generally, and and later on the my presentation I will introduce uh, human factors and ergonomics society of Malaysia in which I am currently the one of the vice president. So, as the Madam uh, Chairman has uh, introduced just now, I'm an academic, a lecturer with the University Pertahana National Malaysia. Um, I've been uh, working with UPNM since um, 2017, since it um, has been established uh, in the Department of uh, Mechanical Engineering, a Faculty of Engineering in UPNM. So, Oh, uh, uh, the slides that I'm going to show to you today is uh, not entirely my slides. Uh, some of the contents are from my president uh, of HFEM, uh, Dr. Ng Yi Guan, and my colleague in the uh, special interest group, Engineering with Human Factors and Economic Society of Malaysia, Dr. Radin from uh, UTEM. Right. So, uh, introduction to ergonomic. I hope all of you listening today knows what ergonomic is. Uh, and if you don't know, don't worry, it's not uh, a rocket science uh, subject. It's very common, actually. It's just a name. It's, it's a bit uh, different. Ergonomics. Some uh, might call it as human factors. Uh, not to be mistaken with the word economics. Okay, So ergonomic has been around... Um, globally not in malaysia uh, very long time as you can see this picture is very old picture okay where they uh, uh, illustrates how you ought to hold your pen okay not penny the spaghetti the, the pasta this is how you ought to hold your pen so this way is good where all your fingers are supporting all the three fingers are supporting the pen but if you use you know uh, and you squeeze your uh, little finger here, it is not good. So this is an old document to show that ergonomics has been around for some time. Yeah. So this is the modern uh, sort of poster that you can get from the internet uh, to briefly introduce you to you what is ergonomics. Uh, understanding ergonomics. <clears throat> so 
you can divide ergonomics or human factors. Some the American likes to call it as human factors. The European likes to call it as ergonomics. But now in the modern days, it is used interchangeably. The word ergonomics and the word human factors. Yeah. So we are in Malaysia. We use it interchangeably. Some some might say ergonomics. Some might say human factors. Or some might say human factors is more on the psychological side and ergonomics is more on the uh, physical side, okay? But in general, ergonomics or human factors, they have three factors that affect uh, or uh, the, uh, that makes ergonomics. It's cognitive ergonomics, which concern with the mental processes, how it affects uh, interaction of human with the system. System here means the, the surrounding, the workspace, the working environment, uh, you know, how human uh, process uh, when there's a heat, when there's vibration. So um, how the mental works in that way. Uh, does it affect it by it and become uh, stressed uh, or bored? or you know slow them down or make them work harder and faster okay so that is cognitive secondly is physical which uh we are common more common to ergonomics uh, people associate ergonomics to sitting good sitting uh expensive bed okay so it's more physical uh low back pain is always associated with uh, ergonomics neck pain uh, so it's physical ergonomics about the human body's responses to physical and physiological physiological work demands uh, and the musculoskeletal disorders symptoms illnesses are the common type of workplace injury in this category that you know uh, that so so uh, has a rehab center for it and they give compensation com compensation for physical ergonomic um, injuries Okay, so affected areas are the physiological, body, anatomical, anthropometric, and biomechanical. Uh, the third one is organiza organizational ergonomics, which includes work design, uh, the standard operating procedure of a, um, a layout of a factory, for example, uh, a participatory design, yeah, um, tele teleworking, teamworking, communication, now work from home, uh, work from office, uh, more on the organizational uh, system, structures, policies, processes. Okay, so some people are uh, experts in these areas, some are more on cognitive, usually people from the psychological departments uh, and physical, uh, uh, more health and uh, safety officers, doctors, and also engineers. Okay, but uh, if we go to International Ergonomic Association uh, web page, uh, there is a the uh, real current definition of ergonomics. It changes uh, over time, but this is the current, the recent uh, definition of ergonomics on the website itself. So you can read it or you can visit the website later. So it relates to human, uh, which is a branch of science and technology it not necessarily be a science subject or technology so it's, it's multidisciplinary yeah it include what is known and theorized about human behavior biological characteristic that can be validly applied to the specification design evaluation operation and maintenance of products and system you see all the red things are very much engineering science and technology yeah when we say specification, design, evaluation, those words are really engineering words. And then uh, the maintaining, maintaining, maintenance of product and system, also uh, an environment that engineering are involved. Yeah, to enhance, safe, effective, and satisfying individuals, groups, and organizations. All right. So ergonomics in engineering is also known as human factors engineering. Uh, I, I don't believe uh, there's any courses in Malaysia that offers human factors engineering, but there are many in overseas, in the US and the UK and so on. So they have human factors engineering diploma or degree, something like that. So what is it? Because our interest today is only on engineering. It's actually applying the human factors uh, or ergonomics knowledge to system design process um, is about human machine or human 
system interaction machine not necessarily a machine that you know in the factory that produce hard um, metal products a machine here is can be your computer it can be any devices at all if you're a housewife your machine is perhaps a can opener the blender the whatever that you use in tm6 okay is a product of engineering or a system a system could be a where the workers are seated uh, in a production line so the human system interaction yeah it has to be optimized uh, so that both human especially the human when we talk about ergonomics and human factors especially the human and the system can perform well yeah can be productive so uh, in, in order for the human to be in, uh, productive is that uh, it, uh, the person or the human don't feel sick uh, uh, and you know happy to do the work can perform the work at the most optimum level with the energy that he has and you know the capability that he has and uh, ergonomics and engineering uh, ergonomic engineering or human factors in engineering also uh, talk about designing a product or a system it can be product or a system that it has to be easy to be used correctly but it is difficult to be used wrongly so what is that it means safety and uh also efficiency in performance so so these are more relevant to engineering in terms of definition of ergonomics just now right okay so basically is to design the right tool for the right people okay ergonomics is always to ensure the environment the machines the workspace everything around the human feed the human not the other way around not human not us as human need to feed to the uh, product or machine or system that that is around us for example if we are asian and we are this size and then uh, we want to use uh, in an equipment uh, that is from uh, Europe, for example, and is huge and big, and it require a lot of force to to maneuver the lever or the handle. Um, so it's not ergonomics, right? Uh, so we need to design the right tool for the people that who are going to use it, right? If you can see what I mean here, okay? Imagine if you suddenly become a director of a company. Uh, what they always say. What company is that? Um, I forgot the drama always uses the, the company's name. Okay, so if you become a director, usually you'll be given a big, uh, supposedly comfortable chair. But, you know, if it's a too big a chair, it's a European size and you are a small petite lady, this, the chair or the, um, yeah, the chair, the seat won't be comfortable to you because it doesn't fit you. This term that we always use in ergonomy is mismatch. It doesn't match your body measurement, right? So if you buy um, uh, an ergonomic mouse, it says in the uh, at the box it's an ergonomic mouse, but it doesn't use any uh, measurement from from your body specifically or from look from Asian measurement. How how will it be? Uh, comfortable to us it might be a bit too big or it might be a bit too high you know so that is um, what is uh, ergonomy in terms of engineering especially in terms of design when we say engineering here is on the design part of a product or system so you see here because you know he's a white collar he doesn't deserve uh, is a white collar is it blue collar uh, he doesn't deserve a a comfortable chair like this guy so he's he's been given a, a wood, wooden chair but it doesn't fit him he has a very long leg and so on so we want to give the right tool for the right people that is the aim of ergonomic and also when we design it, the product for example this chair this is very common environment in our school uh, primary school this is actually from prof sam 
uh, Prof. Shamsul from UPM, uh, his study, one of his study, uh, he always go to schools to do some study on uh, primary students chair. Okay, so what's wrong with this chair? If you just look at the chair, it it is okay. Uh, you know, it has a backrest, it has a good seat pan that is not that long. It suits the body of a child. But the design, um, the design make it easy for the person who sit on it to misuse it, to use it wrongly. Ah, that's the third definition that I showed just now. Um, the design has to be easy to use uh, uh, correctly, but difficult to use to be used wrongly. But this one is easily uh, you, it can, you can abuse the design so that you know it doesn't serve the purpose. What's wrong with sitting like this? You see the child is sitting at the edge of the chair. Maybe we don't see any problem uh, now because children are very flexible and very active but most uh, musculoskeletal disorders problem or issues are actually cumulative. So suddenly at certain age, you will have a low, low back pain problem. And you wouldn't know that maybe when you were small, you always sit like this, it has affected your spine and so on. So it's a cumulative issues and problem. Okay, that's, that's what we want to solve and avoid by uh, introducing good design, ergonomic design in our product and system. Another example. Okay, this is familiar. If you know, you know. Okay, so these seats, you know, bank, it looks pretty. It's actually a new, it's newly introduced prior to the COVID. But it, you just look at the seat. Can it actually support the human sitting on it? You, if your, if your clothes is baju kurung is slippery, you might just fall. It's like a slide in a theme park. Okay, so the designers it, it must be uh, designed by a designer who doesn't have any you know ergonomic or engineering knowledge so he just wants everything to be i don't know perhaps good design all right so we talk a lot about uh, not you know we don't want to introduce any musculoskeletal disorders or problem or issues to the workers and that is usually um most people associate ergonomic with yeah people associate ergonomic with low back pain uh with cumulative trauma disorder yeah when you use uh the mouse too much uh you stress uh your wrist and you stress your low back pain or neck pain so ergonomic is usually is um associated with safety and health and in fact, uh, you know, usually workers from industry or company, they, they know now to make a complaint to so, so to get compensation because of these um, illnesses that is caused by uh, occupational safety and health, right? So, but ergonomics is actually beyond safety and health, okay? As you can see here, these are, of course, this is not made in Malaysia, but these are an example not an example, a lot of examples where ergonomics is practiced in engineering, basically in design, okay? So instead of putting this, uh, this um, gas, I think, I believe it's gas or some liquid in here, vertical like this, which is, which looks uh, stable and balanced. And this is what normally we will, we will do, right? Put it straight up vertical like that but this reduce uh, actually slow will uh, slowing the process of taking out the whatever from here liquid out yeah? so the worker needs to to do more work like this so instead why not design the holder so that the uh, the gas I believe is a gas can be Hold like this at certain angle okay so the work is easier easier okay in ergonomics of course we can do some assessment or evaluation to see 
whether the posture uh, of the worker is improved. In ergonomics, it's easy. The rule of thumb is always to follow uh, the normal, how the body normally, um, you know, in, in, in a normal axis. If a uh, hand, usually it should be downwards. So anything upwards is uh, not ergonomic, especially if it's longer than certain time or repetitive or you have some vibration. So anything, when you leave up your hand of course you need you require uh, more energy so if it's repetitive or it's long hours it will induce some uh, muscle discomfort and then fatigue and of course later on illnesses of course when you do exercise it's only eight times for 30 minutes but imagine they are doing it for eight hours a day uh, every day okay for people in the industry so that's why we look at uh, design of the workspace workstation like this to improve uh, the productivity. Of course, this is a faster work. Also to help the performance of the human. Okay, so they don't feel sick, ill uh, because of the work, all right? And this design, for example, this and this, okay? Why vertical, of course, the energy might be, uh, or this is the common way we think, uh, all wheels or leader, uh, uh, lever or handle should be straight like that, okay? But, you know, uh, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't serve the most efficient purpose, uh, the most efficient, okay? Or this, okay? Instead of this, you see, it requires two people, two paramedics here to push this, um, and then they have to lift uh, this into the ambulance. So a good design is that they have designed this. I don't know if this has been used or not, but this is a, just an example of good design. Uh, immediately they can push it into the ambulance uh, by a single person, by a single paramedic. Okay. Again, this is application engineering uh, in uh, ergonomics in engineering design. Or this, or this is very common, okay? As a student or a researcher, you always have to, perhaps if you're a biological researcher or chemistry, maybe you always, a material even, uh, use the microscope, right? So, okay. So maybe I should change the pointer color. Do you see my pointer? Okay. Do you see my pointer? Okay. So, uh, you you don't need so much time to to feel immediate pain on your neck here okay even if you just looking down at your phone you will feel discomfort and pain and soreness at your neck right so imagine if you have to do this the whole day and you it's very small that you need to to see from the microscope it it you know add into the stress of the user of the microscope. So this is before the good design, after the uh, some consideration on the anthropometry of the user. Okay, the word anthropometry has been mentioned here. I will uh, explain later. So they what did what did they do? Can you see what is the difference? The after the uh, what do you call this? The binocular for the eyes is longer so that it looks weird right this is a common one we expect the user to to bow down why 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 can't we have it longer and this has some flexible um part here so that you know the user can still see properly correctly uh, the specimen down there without hurting the neck Okay, so they can work longer hours uh, without complaining instead of this one, right? So this is actually design. Or these are the problem is with ergonomic design, ergonomic plier and so on, they usually charge you more, more than the normal one, right? I understand that, okay? So good design uh, or ergonomic design of anything, not just any uh, devices like this, 
it has to keep or maintain the natural position the postures of the users okay so if our hand if you can see our hand is like this okay the imagine there's a line in our hand if we draw a free body diagram if you're an engineer you know what is free body diagram right so it shouldn't be banded okay the free body diagram should be straight here so if you can main, design anything the design should be banded your hand will should should not be banded so if you can maintain that if you can if you can see if you can maintain this straight line of your hand or any part of your body like just now we see the neck is maintained to be straight instead of some angle there so it's a good design okay that is the rule of thumb so here maintaining the hand and wrist in neutral position stress-free position so how do we maintain that we need to bend or put some angle to the uh, handle of this equipment or device Okay, of course, soft grip is extra for the ergonomics. Okay, instead of this one, the normal one, the common, even the common knife that we use in the kitchen uh, during the korban, you have so many, um, you get from the neighborhood, from the mosque, uh, daging korban, and you have to cut it. Use the normal knife, okay, after a while you feel pain here, right? Imagine that it's a butcher in a warehouse that does the same work that you do for that high raya for five days a week, more than four or five hours a day, perhaps. So imagine what will happen to the hand. So these are actually the risk factor, ergonomic risk factor, and the injuries can be the cumulative trauma disorder or um, any musculoskeletal disorders. Okay. So if you have to bend your hand, you have stressful uh, stress, you stress the muscle, uh, the nerves, okay? So less force is given actually. Okay. Here is another example, okay? So you see, this is easily, uh, easily it makes the worker to do the work incorrectly or in a wrong posture a wrong position because this thing is heavy okay this this steel is very heavy because it needs to support heavier stuff okay it needs to support what is it behind this yeah i think it's a uh, some steel device also so it needs to support this steel device so this might might be concrete steel so it's heavier stronger and imagine what will happen to his spine if he keep on doing this. So you can actually create a design that make him stand straight in his neutral position by just adding this lever with some wheels underneath. You see, it's just a very a simple engineering approach. It doesn't need to be complicated or expensive right so these things can be introduced or uh, done locally it means that if you're working in some places uh, in some place in some factory for example some workspace and you see this kind of problem and you can introduce this so it's custom it is custom to your application Okay, so it's a it's not a generic approach but of course there are rule of thumb first is that you need to make sure that the human is in his neutral position least force used yeah and few others those are ergonomic rule of thumbs okay and this is what uh, i mentioned earlier uh, this really um, this is an example of design in a kitchen okay so if you actually a good ergonomic designer or engineer or who knows and understand uh, ergonomics principles, you know that you need to use this data that can ensure the user of this place can perform his or her work productively, efficiently, effectively, right? 
So these data, these measurement, the length, the height, the depth are called anthropometry. So ergonomics, again, uh, if you want to revisit the word, why is it ergonomic? It's actually ergonomous, it's Latin word, so it's work, human work. And also anthropometry is measurement of the man. Okay, so measurement of the man so that it can fit the workspace, the work environment that uh, he or she, um, you know, are exposed to, to do his work perfectly. Okay. Sometimes we we can see that the uh, kitchen counter or, uh, you know, cabinet are a bit too high or a bit too low. If it's a bit too low, you have to bend down to do the work. Uh, sometimes you, you, you experience that, right? When you wash too many dishes, you feel back pain. It means that the depth of the sink or the height of the uh, counter is not suitable to your height. All right, so what you can do, renovate your the whole kitchen, that would be a dream come true. But maybe if it's a bit too high, you can use a platform, a stool for you to stand on it so that it, you know, achieve your height. Or if it's too, if it's too high, it's easy. But if it's too low, uh, ask other people to do it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right, that is a good suggestion, right? I mean, this is not ergonomic, it's not for me. It's for you to do. <laughs> All right, so, uh, okay, this is, uh, okay, now these are just a bit of introduction. In this now. We need, uh, in ergonomic engineering, ergonomic design, we need data like this, anthropometry data, the reach, how far it should be. Like uh, the, you imagine the most common workspace that you are most people are in, in is the car yeah? you uh, everyone drives a car okay so you at the car seat is uh, the user of the car seat and you 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 maybe um, you know you ne maybe never realized it but easily you can you know change the radio the aircon all the switches there without even looking at it and it's usually within your reach. Yeah, so that is, it's, it's not just, you know, they've just put it. It's by design. They know where it should be. Yeah, your hand, your, because it's going to be your left hand, the dial should be. And then some car, they improve, but, uh, you know, expensive car, uh, they want to make it more ergonomic so you don't leave the wheels for so long. Okay, both of your hands on the wheel, so they put the, volume and everything on the steering wheel yeah it's better design right so that is actually ergonomic and they have to use anthropometry data in order for them to design all that okay sometimes it is a bit annoying and uh, disappointing when the cup holder is too small and you cannot put any cup inside it or your mineral bottle or your some tupperware cannot fit it's too small or if it's too large, it always trip over. You put bottle there, it will trip over, right? So these sometimes um, they design it with without the, the anthropometry data. So that will happen. Okay. So like for example, a chair, uh, because people always associate uh, seat with ergonomics. So we're talking about engineering just now. In engineering, in design, usually we have step by step rules. It can be just one, two, three, four, five, this, these five steps. Or it can be uh, more, they just break it down further or they use different terms. Basically, it's first of all, in engineering design, we have conceptual engineering stage where we imagine. Uh, we have the concepts. Usually, it comes with uh, from a sketch, ideas, uh, so many sketch, brainstorming of uh, engineers and not necessarily just just engineers the market people the uh you know the hr they have some input the material planning uh they will give all the information and so on so here is where we need the anthropometry data because we want to to match uh, we don't want our product to be mismatched we want to match the users and the design that we're going to produce of course no design can fit everyone okay it cannot be one for all 
uh, it has to be many for all because usually in industry they use a term uh, they use the term percentile so uh, because we, we cannot fit everyone they use fifth percentile for the minimum uh, 95th percentile for the maximum and for most people they use the 50th percentile although this is not ideal this is not ideal of course in safety terms maybe for aviation they need to consider 99 percent we don't want to have if you have 100 parties uh, 100 people in the plane uh 10% will die because they cannot fit the door. It can't be like that, like that, right? So maybe they have it 99% or maybe 100 percent Okay. Uh, but it can't be 100 percent Okay. So they reduce it. The 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 percentile will be larger. What uh what what is the the impact of playing with this percentile? Of course, the cost in in the planning, the designing and fabricating. Uh, the product of the system okay so um, usually in industry because of the cost they will usually use the the fifth to 95th and 50th percentile or maybe they have certain uh, target audience okay for example um, compact cars like axia might be uh, those days the when they introduce those cars they aim that those cars will be used by youth uh, by you know youngsters uh by women so that's why the the leg area the leg room is a bit short uh the head room is a bit short they don't expect mat Saleh to use axia or my be right so so they they use a more stringent constraint percentiles this will help the engineers to reduce or optimize the cost of fabrication and for more expensive car they have flexible you know range seating range they can move it backward and uh, front and more um, flexibility so it will have higher costs but the target audience can afford it okay so it depends it's again engineering and of course business people has to be there to look at the economic of things so uh, this uh, 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 anthropometry data and the measurement, the adjustability, and so on. These data researchers are doing this in universities. Industries are working with the universities to get this. Uh, and some, if they don't, they actually just use US data or Japan data, which is not that accurate. But generally, people don't complain about that. People only complain about COVID and not be able to go out to malls and so on. So conceptual engineering stage is actually getting all this data, getting all this input from the customers, from the HR and so on. So that is engineering approach number one is to do the concepts. They, they might have many concepts. Okay, that's why sometimes when a new car uh, is going to be released, maybe next year, some leaking news, you get the, this leak news, it, it looks like this, it looks like this. Yeah. So that might be the concepts that it, they introduced in the beginning. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, you know, those are the concepts, usually in sketches or perhaps engineering drawing. Okay, so the next stage is front end engineering design stage. Front end in engineering in modern days, nowadays, we usually use uh, software to simulate, okay, simulation, uh, whether this valve uh, is able to work. You see, if you can see, the valve is actually the lever is vertical because it's that's how we normally do. But there's also a, a, a obstructing a structure there that won't allow the lever to go this way, only this way. Uh, this is, you know, a mismatch in engineering. Do I have to stop now or, you know? It's, it's okay. okay. It's okay. okay. Right. I'm going to continue. Just a little bit more. Right. Okay. So this is an example of how engineering is done in, in I mean, uh, design uh, is done in engineering and where the human factors engineering HFE is human factors engineering is uh, you know is interacted or uh, integrated in engineering concept okay they they look at this uh, the feasible of the uh, whether it can work it works or not if it doesn't work means that uh, it's wrong in the engineering design is wrong but it's also not economic yeah so imagine if this can work but the operator is you know his hand is always hurt because it will go always uh, hit this structure okay. 
so it's bad design right it can be simulated mm -hmm. now uh, this is actually a real case study simulated from a if you can see it's actually a uh, oil and gas platform okay this mm -hmm. is a uh, case study by some uh, of our uh, special interest group sig engineering okay the next stage is detailed design detailed design means the engineering the concept study uh, we have many concepts we finally choose one out of like five or ten after you know many processes there are many tools like trees la, uh, house of metrics there are many 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 ways of doing it there's no single way of doing it but engineers usually use their own uh, industry usually it's localized whatever that they use in the industry industry and finally after they choose one concept they will come up the final one they will do the proper design the proper drawing this is uh, again maybe from uh, some software like solid work or you know you, you know autocad right so pro engineer the uh, katia whatever and they can actually simulate this structure what are the materials that going to use and they can um, know do further analysis like stress study dynamic study or maybe temperature thermal study and then how much will it cost and so on and they can simulate um how the workers whether if they stand here the workers um uh, height and so on is it is, uh, good or not okay so a detailed design is almost like towards the end because after detailed design uh if it's something wrong here they still need to go back and but it's uh already in the software so it's easy to, ch to make changes mm -hmm. then later is the fabrication and construction uh, stage okay where first maybe they do some prototype first for example this this conceptual design they just catch okay uh mm -hmm. you know this is woman problem doctor need to insert something into the women from mm -hmm. the down part so mm -hmm. you imagine doctor always have to you know bend down, down and you know yeah very bad posture for the doctor or nurse mm -hmm. uh, and it's not a uh, comfortable work also so mm -hmm. uh, so imagine if we can put something underneath this is not expensive uh, it's mm -hmm. just inflatable so uh, the worker at uh, the worker the patient is also uh, actually comfortable in this way and it's more natural so it's the process will be easier because it will open easier and it's easier for them to insert whatever device that they need to do you know check for cancer over mm -hmm. or you know pregnancy and so on so mm -hmm. they the sketch is like this and then they make a prototype like using a um, maybe cheaper balloons after the design mm -hmm. and then second generation okay maybe we can put some uh you know flat or it has to be easy to be clean you can fold it and so on and the third generation is something like this Okay, so it can have many stages of fabrication for the prototype before finally commissioning stage. Where I'm finished. I'm finished with this. Okay, so commissioning stage is basically launching, launching. Yeah. So um, that's usually the engineering process and where uh, ergonomics uh, can be integrated into this engineering process from beginning, from the design, from the de and then the detailed design until the prototyping if there are more changes like maybe this is too sharp uh because if it's plastic um sometimes it's sharp uh maybe it's sharp yeah so maybe they need to uh, you know design it differently sew it differently and so on so that's where we integrate ergonomics into engineering all right now i'm going to introduce to you um uh, the human factors and ergonomic society of malaysia <laughs> Mm -hmm. All right. I'm currently the one of the vice president. We have two vice president. Our current president, uh, our term is uh, going to end soon this September. Uh, and the mm -hmm. current president is Dr. Ng Yi Guan, uh, associate professor Dr. Ng Yi Guan from UPM uh, mm -hmm. with a, a light health department right, under the faculty of uh, medicine in UPM. Okay, uh, and another vice president is uh, Mr. Ramey, if you know him from NIOSH, he's, he's quite famous, I think, among the industry. So the history of human factors and ergonomic society in Malaysia, it was established in 2010 by Prof. Halimatun. Uh, Prof. Halimatun Khalid is um, a certified professional ergonomist, the only one in Malaysia, and the second one is her husband, who is not a Malaysian, 
maybe now a Malaysian, but he's uh, Prof. Martin Helander, if you know him from the textbook. Okay, so 2010, they established Human Factors and Economic Society of Malaysia, uh, registered with ROS, mm -hmm. um, get to basically to gather human factors economic professional at that time not so many now even now it's not that many but at least we now already have a society where people these professionals can gather and exchange uh, like in the whatsapp group the active member whatsapp group uh, exchange you know uh, a lot of things all right so uh, finally 2011 officially registered so when uh, every country in uh, Southeast Asia actually have their own human factors and economic society. So we have a bigger umbrella. So we joined the Southeast Asian Network of Economic Society, CNES. So under CNES, there's um, Thailand, Economic Society, there's Philippines, Indonesia. Um, where else? Um, Singapore used to have... Uh, yeah, I guess that it. Okay, mm -hmm. and then um, in 2013, we developed a blueprint for HFP in Malaysia. We aim to serve uh, RAGI, the short form for Rakyat or People uh, Academia. Most of us, many of us are actually from the Academia. Uh, the government, of course, we're working closely with DOSH and of course the industry. Um, and we have many workshops to do this. Uh, mm -hmm. And then um, finally, in 2013, we uh, officially joined the IEA, International Economic Association that uh, gave the definition of economic in the beginning of this uh, presentation today, mm -hmm. as Federated Society. So we are very much um, under the umbrella of IEA. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and then in 2013 also, we signed a collaboration with NIOSH. We work uh, closely with NIOSH and with DOSH. In 2017, we actually... Uh, release the first guideline for mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, specifically on ergonomic, not safety, not health, but ergonomics with DOSH, right? So these are examples of our past activities for Rakyat, for people, we have a lot of awareness program. Mm -hmm. uh, we usually have programs that is sponsored by SOCSO. Uh, mm -hmm. If you're interested, you can, you know, contact us for it, for details, uh, mm -hmm. like MSD and ergonomic design of office. And this, these are just few mm -hmm. examples. We also go for hospitals, environments, uh, human factors in product design, of course, HCI too, uh, road safety. Now we have people from aviation as well. And of course, academia, we have conferences. We have webinars. This year, we are going to have, we usually alternate. HPM mm -hmm. usually have, a, if that year is for seminar, human factors and economic seminar. Seminar means we just invite uh, speakers to talk to audiences. Mm -hmm. Like this year, we have conference. Conference means more people uh, can can uh, you know uh, share their findings from researchers. Uh, okay. Also, together with the conference in September, we have ergonomic product design competition. Usually, uh, the past years have been uh, in this six years. We call it as Ergo Cup, but uh, recently we know Ergo Cup is actually a trademark. We cannot use it, uh, you know, without consent without their consent mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. they asked us to change the name so it's going to be a go olympic this year yeah it's going to be on september so we invite you from masa and your students if you have any sure. design mm -hmm. uh I, the, the date uh i think has been closed uh for registration uh last 15 july but usually it's not until september so you can usually ask uh, the secretary, if your students has any, or the lecturers has any design at all, you can just, because this is national level, you get, you know, some uh, recognition for it. All right. Okay. So I will share the link later. All okay, right. Sure. Um, okay. And also I want to, um, this is also for Masa to know that we also have student chapters. This is okay. quite uh, new. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, currently only we, we are trying to get because the uh, public university is a bit uh, complicated, uh, the bu bureaucracy is a bit uh, complex. Yeah, mm -hmm. trying to get their approval for the student chapters is a bit more difficult. But we have uh, Consis. Consis is a private university. Again, uh, it has um, it offers economic course in uh, diploma courses in degree. I think in their university, so they are they have they have established their student chapter with human mm -hmm. factors and economic situation. So, um, 
So the handbook was out uh, in 2019-20. Uh, it is already in the website. If you're interested, mm -hmm. you can go and find it. There are, uh, and but if you're interested, you can just contact me. I will lead you to the person in charge, which is uh, who is in charge, Nick, Mr. Nick from Consist. He is in charge mm -hmm. of this uh, student chapter. Okay, with government, of course, we have MOU with NIOSH. We mm -hmm. work together with Mission Design Council. Uh, we developed the first uh, guideline with DOSH, Ergonomic Assessment and Manual Handling. We also have other guidelines, uh, Metro Handlings and so on. Uh, training program grants under SOCSO, that I mentioned earlier, uh, we get it uh, almost every year. Uh, and um, Ergonomic Train um, Personnel Courses. Okay, we have this throughout the year. This is a guideline 2017. You can get this guideline from the website, DOSH website, mm -hmm. not our website, DOSH website. Yeah, this is mm -hmm. DOSH. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, so these are the example of uh, ergonomic train person courses that we had previously. Now we still have, even though it's online. Okay, mm -hmm. we still have. Okay. Um, example of uh, our collaboration with DOSH. Okay, with the industry, we always have a good relationship with industry, workshop, the fundamental assessment method of industrial economics, uh, conducted training on HFE and effective design. Uh, again, it's MENA covering HCI, process control, school economic. Uh, we have collaboration with uh, TM, mm -hmm. uh, with Petronas, Symdabi, Proton, Moderna, Samsung. Um, we used to have corporate membership as well, but uh, mm -hmm. now it's just associate and full member and student members mm -hmm. right uh yeah we have done uh ehs week ergonomic exhibition at these places some are sponsored by so, so some is requested by the industry themselves we also have international activities like we under the southeast asian uh network society cnes umbrella with ilo um and then uh that we're trying in the middle of developing a certified professional economist uh, accreditation, what do you call mm -hmm. it? Certification. Okay, uh, we collaborate with HDSA uh, uh, and New Zealand and ACAT, Asian Council of Economic Design. Okay, um, and the way forward now, currently, we are trying very hard to push this professional certification so once once you graduate later uh, your students you they can try to you know get a certification it's like you know engineering have the ir and mm -hmm. and, uh, and then they have ts right so later like uh prof halimatun she has cpe so we're going to have something like that as well okay certified professional human factor economic from malaysia Right, uh, but of course, an endorsed by I, uh, IEA. It has to be endorsed by IEA. Okay, so uh, now currently our teams are also, uh, some of our members are revising on the sitting, standing, and work and video guidelines, or it has been published. This is quite old news. We have InterVarsity and National Competition on Economic Design Innovation, I, I mentioned earlier, a good cup of Olympic now. And mm -hmm. we hope to do more, uh, you know, Nation, national event like this among the universities mm -hmm. and we also have journals if you don't know uh, we would like to invite our uh, massa acad uh, academician to, mm -hmm. to submit your papers your so student sure papers uh, to hfej is mm -hmm. free of charge it's not scopus yet but it's already my set if uh, you know if you can keep the uh, momentum going maybe one day it will, it will be scopus Okay, uh, you can access the papers uh, online, HFPG, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have special interest group. Currently, uh, the most active is transportation. Uh, the champion is from UITM. They focus on motorbike, mm -hmm. uh, motorcycle. Uh, and we have product design. Um, I forgot who is the person in charge because it's a new one. Okay, mm -hmm. and then um, engineering. I'm in the special interest group engineering led by mm -hmm. uh, led by Dr. Radin from UTEM. And mm -hmm. uh, we don't have Northern Region anymore, but we're still waiting for the new name uh, mm -hmm. that can only be endorsed by the next AGM. They'll be mm -hmm. on September during the conference, right? So we have, I mentioned earlier, we have federate, uh, 
federated members of we are federated members of IA, uh, member of CNES, actually very mm -hmm. active member of CNES. We have organized CNES twice, I think, in Langkawi and twice or once. Or maybe next year we should mm -hmm. be organizing CNES. CNES also has a, its conference. Last mm -hmm. two years in Bangkok. Oh, the recent one in Philippines online. Oh, that's why I forgot. Okay, so next is Malaysia. And mm -hmm. then we have ACAT. ACAT also have their conference. They usually will invite us if they have uh, their own conferences and so on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we are working with all of this. Mm -hmm. Maybe later one day, Masa will be in this too. Inshallah. Inshallah, yeah. All right, so our incoming conferences that I mentioned, uh, these are the link to the website, hfem.org mm -hmm. uh, slash femc, and also mm -hmm. the uh, Golympic. Yeah, uh, it will be on the 27th to 28th September. Uh, I know the date uh, has just closed, but mm -hmm. uh, we usually welcome more if you want to join. We hope to have this conference uh, hybrid. Uh, if it's allowed, we will do it in CONSIS. We mm -hmm. actually have visited CONSIS for the place and so on, but, mm -hmm. um, so, but also online, it's hybrid. So it cannot then fully online. Okay. Right. So under SIG Engineering, of which I'm one of uh, the member, mm -hmm. uh, there are lecturers from UTEM. Uh, Dr. Raiden is the the leader currently. There's mm -hmm. also few from UTEM, uh, Dr. Isa, Dr. Shafiq, mm -hmm. uh, and UIA, Dr. Ibrahim, and Dr. Malik. Uh, myself from UPNM, uh, Dr. Tam from UKM, and we have Mr. Havzi from Oil and Gas. Uh, we had two webinars under SIG Engineering last year. One is from Dr. Radian and another is from uh, Mr. Havzi from Oil and Gas. All right, so I think that's all from me. So you see this cup here is definitely not designed by human factors uh, engineer. <laughs> if you drink from this cup, it will definitely feel kan? Uh, habis lah. Yes. You kena tengok. <laughs> it's nice. It's not for, you know, your coffee. All right. Uh, so that's all from me. Uh, just some mm -hmm. pictures, you know, if, if, if bad design, mm -hmm. it will mm -hmm. create things like this. You know what is this? When they open the door, it becomes this. We don't want that. And it says here, pool for local fire alarm, but what to pool? So they just put without thinking. This is bad design, bad engineering design. I'm sorry. Do you know what is this? When it's closed, the correct name is there. When it's open, it becomes. Abang driver pun pening. Okay. This is another. We never think about it because, you know, penyapu is penyapu. That's why Dyson is so expensive as compared as compared to, you know, our own uh, vacuum uh, as for this also. So the good design, engineering design usually uh, makes it, uh, the you know, usually makes the price is a bit. Okay, and then when we design something, uh, because we want it to fit the human, uh, mm -hmm. we need to understand how the body works, mm -hmm. how the human body works, okay? So you look at this. When we put on our feet into these heels, what you did is this. You know, you, you, you compress your muscle mm -hmm. here and you might not feel anything now, but later on you get bunions and so on when you're older, right? Mm -hmm. And what happened is actually you, you're supposed to have this posture, natural mm -hmm. posture. When you put on your heels, this is the correct posture should be like this. And then you are actually forcing yourself to be in this way. So what you did is actually uh, compressing your spine. Mm -hmm. You will say, what is my heels going to, uh, how it's going to affect my spine? But it's actually mm -hmm. affecting mm -hmm. your spine because you actually trying to uh, do some correction to the angle here. Mm -hmm. Right. Ah, more ergonomic improvement example now this design forced this worker to lean forward to bend 
just to put this uh, shackle on the on this heavy parts here but why not just you know lift up the table a little bit so mm -hmm. he doesn't need to bend so much if you do ergonomic assessment such as ruler or reba mm -hmm. you will see that actually uh, it reduces the the uh, extremities that this may be 11 or 15 this may be four or three which is mm -hmm. better right like this also this is a very simple design you wouldn't think that is a heavy work for the worker but imagine that he has to do like long hours the whole day it will cause uh, uh community from us syndrome or disorder right it and is coming for repetitive work right yeah yeah mm -hmm. so you're easily easily you get trigger finger you say as trigger mm -hmm. finger right mm -hmm. uh, just imagine you have to do quick Kuih tart ke air gaya, you know. Mm -hmm. Buat kuih tart berapa balang pun you dah rasa kan? Imagine the whole, the whole day, the whole week. And, you know, non-stop. Lama-lama dia tak rasa dah tanggal ni. Dia dah hilang dah. Okay, so because it's easily can be solved like this. Mm -hmm. Tengok tu. To maintain the natural posture of the hand. Mm -hmm. ha. Kan kadang-kadang kita tak nampak. And we yes. just get it. Right? So as with knife as well, uh, that's why... That's why this knife, although it's weird, in some hotels or restaurants, mm -hmm. they use this knife and it's very, very expensive, but it's actually mm -hmm. ergonomic. Kat kita je lah, maybe guna knife for a minute je kan? Yes. All right, so that's all from me. Uh, it's dangerous if you don't know. Mm -hmm. Because what do you do when you don't know what to do, right? Yes. So knowledge is power. Uh, now that we know, then we need to take uh, action to, to make sure that we are not affected by all these risk factors. So that's all. Thank you very much for listening and watching. Okay, okay. thank you. Mm. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dian. Very informative and interesting talk. Okay, so it is a open, uh, it is like a title is open eyes to the to the students, okay, uh, in engineering. Maybe this is first time they hear about ergonomics. Okay, so uh, hopefully uh, we can uh, have collaborations maybe in student chapter journal yes, join yes, the yes. journal yeah conference yes, yes. yeah next time mm -mm. Yeah. so we will be in contact yeah yes sure uh -huh. just okay. contact me personally and i will uh you know uh connect you with the person in charge in various aspect that you asked just now sure sure inshallah okay right. so uh mm -hmm. hopefully uh for the presentation it will be beneficial to everyone so, okay so thank you everyone for joining us today okay assalamualaikum thank you Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye.